Thank you for coming. And um, it's a big day for us today at the Development Policy Centre. Uh, we have our inaugural uh, Harold Mitchell Development Policy Lecture being delivered uh, starting at 12.30 uh, by Timor Finance Minister uh, Amelia Perez. And I'd like to welcome her to uh, the ANU and to the Crawford School. And uh, of course, also we have uh, Harold Mitchell uh, from the, in this capacity, the Harold Mitchell Foundation, who is uh, sponsoring this lecture series and who also is announcing today a very generous uh, gift in support of the uh, Development Policy Centre. Uh, so this is a chance to ask uh, questions to both of these uh, eminent uh, guests. And I'll first call on Harold just to say a few words. Oh, OK. And Thank then uh, the Minister. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, as we often say of the working press, uh, uh, I'm delighted to be here and also to to uh, to, to be with the minister. Uh, at 12:30 uh, today, uh, I'll be announcing uh, the uh, support of a grant uh, over five years of 2.5 million to the Development Centre, uh, and I'll be saying that uh, there's a great need in Australia, uh, as we have so many developing countries uh, on our near shore uh, that we give great support. Uh, the Australian aid program is tremendous and it's headed on its way to, to doubling and that is so important uh, for Australia and everything that we're doing with our near neighbours of which we welcome in particular uh, the Minister from East Timor. My uh, history with East Timor uh, is hopefully uh, deep and goes back some time uh, to uh, I think it was uh, 12 years ago when I first met Janana Gujmao uh, as he visited Melbourne and uh, opened the, the Melbourne Festival, of which I was the chairman, and I was impressed that on our doorstep I thought there was a modern-day Nelson Mandela. This man was able to speak of peace, and yet he'd been through a terrifying period of the last two decades, and his, he, his job ahead of him was to bring uh, our near neighbour uh, to, uh, to a new world, and uh, he has done that. And so it's important that Australia recognises that, that gives it support, uh, and our Australian government has done exactly that uh, through uh, through AusAid, and so that is important. But at the same time, Australia uh, needs to develop uh, all of the original thinking that we can uh, in both the United Kingdom and in the United States. There are uh, policy centres, think tanks, uh, which are eminent. And so I'm happy to support uh, Professor Stephen Howes and the ANU and the Development Policy Centre and where that's headed, which is to give support uh, and, and uh, a new thinking uh, to everything that Australia needs to do. And that is what we'll be announcing today. Uh, there is uh, each year proposed a, over the next five years uh, a major presentation which will be made and it's so appropriate that the first one uh, under the regime that we have here, uh, that that should be given by, uh, uh, by uh, such a great nation of East Timor, and uh, I might say in its cabinet a woman, and someone who has been spectacular uh, in what she has achieved as the Finance Minister uh, of East Timor, and so uh, that will be happening. So Minister, with that, can I welcome you uh, very much, and I look forward to the speech that you'll be giving today, which I've had the value of reading, and it's, it is absolutely appropriate and right and proper. Uh, that uh, you should be here today making that speech. So could I ask you to join me? And help you out of there, we just took a minute. There we go, there we go. And just I'll let you say thank you okay. for what we're doing. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mitchell. And uh, thank you to the Crawford School for inviting me here. It is actually, uh, I'm very pleased to be here to be able to actually uh, speak a little bit about the experience that we have been, gone through in Timor-Leste and how we can add, add value to the think tankers uh, in, in the world because uh, it's all about how you get out of fragility, what do you have to do, are uh, the things that you're doing, are they what has been preached in the past? So we need people to actually think and look again at uh, what's happened and identify exactly the, the critical things that needs to be done to get a country moving out of crisis time like we had uh, some five years ago uh, and move us to the development path. So it is with uh, uh, a lot of uh, pleasure and honor that I am here to contribute whatever I've experienced myself as a person, what my country has experienced as a country. And uh, I will also be talking a little bit more also about how we are also trying to help other countries uh, that find themselves like us, the little G7+, plus, which are now made up of 18 countries, everybody looking for a way out of 
the current status, which is mostly conflict or post-conflict or fragility. And uh, we need to find the formula. We are not fully there yet, but with discussions like this, we, sh well, we hope to be able to actually find the right formula to help all these countries. We are talking about 1.5 billion people that have more or less been left behind when we, back in 2000, all the nations came together, the United Nations, and uh, agreed on the Millennium Development Goals. And as you know, there was 15 years to implement it. Now this is like 12 years down the track, and we've left behind 1.5 million billion people. And so we are now looking for means and ways of next time around, the post-MDG, the post-2015 Development Agenda does not leave us <coughs> behind again. So. Mr. Mitchell, uh, I'm open to questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, if uh, Catherine or anyone else has questions, <laughs> then uh, uh, would you, do you want them? On the left of the yeah, end, sure. That's right. yeah. Um, I know you've got an interest in development and you're involved to some extent in the A review. Mm. Why, why do you have that development interest as a business person? What's the connection there? And why have you specifically given money to the AMU? Um, both very good questions, or three. If they, well, firstly, the review that I did was not in in the way it was in the, it was into uh, philanthropy and the arts. But to go back to the question, uh, I think uh, the real reason that uh, I'm so, it's so important. Uh, that, that we all support what I've talked about, which is the development of policy. I think started with my original comments, uh, which was that it, when I first met Janana Gujra, uh, and uh, I was just so impressed with the fact that the, he was a tiny nation which needed such support that I started to look wider than that, uh, to realise that uh, as, a, as a, the country that we are, such a lucky country, an incredible place that we are, the 12th biggest economy, although there are 50 nations that are larger in population that we are, and that we have on the edge of us so many developing uh, nations, uh, more than any other such nation in the world. That's important that we take great care about that. At the same time, uh, I'm the chairman of CARE uh, in Australia, and uh, that gives me, uh, and, and, and on the worldwide board of CARE, CARE International, and that gives me the opportunity to look at, uh, at the world uh, where we need to help. Uh, and Australia, uh, needs to do that. Uh, we can afford to do it and our governments of both sides uh, at all times have been able to do that. But right now uh, the aid program is, is headed towards doubling, uh, which is notable, and it is absolutely necessary that we do that in the proper way because uh, in the nations that we're dealing with uh, uh, they are new to many things, including getting great relief and help, which all of which they want. So we need to do it properly, and uh, in, in, in doing that, so we need to give every bit of support that we can, uh, both uh, inside and outside government. The government is doing an outstanding job, uh, and, and AusAid is one of the best in the world at doing that. Uh, but uh, I picked out uh, the ANU because, uh, through Professor Stephen Howes, uh, has a great interest in bringing public policy uh, to the fore in a way that we can all help. And I might say also that in, in the wider uh, public life that we're going to see more of that. The government can only do so much because in private enterprise we have some of the finest minds, just as America's done exactly the same thing, different parts of Europe. So it will be continuing uh, here in, in that way too. Uh, the Lowy Institute has showed a way in, in uh, how they deal with uh, foreign affairs and such like that. And the ANU, uh, one of the two great universities in Australia, not to disparage any of the others, they're so competitive with each other, uh, is in is perfectly positioned uh, to uh, be able to add to the thinking on on uh, what we do in those developed countries, and so it was a very easy decision for me uh, to be able to give support in that. The generosity of that philanthropy, though, is obviously very significant to this institution. Hmm. Why why here when obviously a lot of people would be calling for that's that to be donated in direct aid somewhere? Why sure. Well, uh, it, it's about thinking and planning into the future, and that's uh, as important as just the direct aid that can be. If you do it wrongly, uh, if uh, that dollar is misspent, it'll never be spent again, and uh, it'll be it, it'll be used but then abused. And so it's so important that we get it right in every way, and uh, uh, that's uh, that's why I picked out uh, Stephen House, to be honest. Uh, he brings a fine mind to it, a, a great intellect to what uh, what is happening, and a great experience. Uh, and the ANU, uh, who I've met with, has uh, given it every support in every way, and this is the way that uh, the way forward. There's no doubt about that. That uh, that uh, private private people 
uh, that uh, private wealth, where that might be, uh, and public institutions come together to make it a, a better good. And in, in Australia, uh, the, the care of our new neighbours, uh, near neighbours, is just so important. So it was easy for me to pick the ANU, had a, a fine institution, uh, such a great interest in doing it, and the development of the centre here uh, to, to drive it forward in Canberra uh, with a lot of the policy makers uh, right on the doorstep, it was absolutely appropriate. And may I ask the Minister? Sure. The Minister? You're not going to use it. Minister, do you feel there is um, is there some uh, development fatigue in Western countries at the moment with the global financial crisis? And do you have a message to them, given that you are trying to help rewrite, in a sense, the way Western countries approach aid? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about uh, from the Tiburis perspective. We have not yet uh, experienced the development fatigue because our development partners are still there and the aid, or the assistance they give us has been maintained since, uh, I can compare for the, since I became minister. In fact, sometimes they give a little bit more uh, and uh, it all depends on, on what they want to do in areas where they want to help us. Uh, but around the world, I understand that um, there is uh, less of money to go around. And uh, I want to make a point because I just came back from Haiti where we had our G7 plus retreat where we welcome a new member, Comoros. But in that retreat, we came out with a declaration. It's called the Haiti Declaration. And the G7 plus was saying that we're not actually asking for more money. What we are asking is the better use of that money and in a, in a more effective way. And so I actually um, uh, welcome the, the uh, donation that Mr. Mitchell is doing to institutions like uh, Crawford because uh, one of our biggest challenge is changing the mind setting of our own development partners. And you, the only way to do it is for people to actually relook, reflect and rethink about what has happened before, why has it not worked, why is it working? And, and therefore, their, their um, piece of writing will be more powerful than our voice. We may say it, but uh, uh, this is why we came together, the G7 Plus, to make our voice stronger. But with assistance from uh, academics like them, it will reinforce this, because it's not us saying it. Normally, people think that we just don't know how to manage, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, there are means and ways to make it better. Uh, implementation of, of, of the aid and, be, be, and become more effective. And I think the two goes hand in hand.